What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Jiu Jitsu Junction podcast. My name is Andre, and today I'm here with my buddy, Carrie. And the central topic today is Jiu Jitsu athletes aren't focusing enough on strength training. And a lot of that has to do with like the ethos of Jiu Jitsu, you know, technique conquers strength and size. A technique helps to compensate for strength mm -hmm. and size, right? So it's, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that. There's more going on. Um, so obviously I took the guy with the biggest muscles that I know in person and uh, I brought him on to talk about strength. So do you have any opening thoughts? Um, so that's, uh, and that's probably the most attractive thing about jujitsu, right? The idea that technique can conquer strength and like, yes, that is true. But like when you, I like just logically, when you think about it, when you have two athletes who just are a little closer, both similar skill level, yep. usually the stronger one is going to be the one that wins. Mm -hmm. So it's not that strength doesn't matter. It's like, there's just this, like, uh, there's just a cost benefit to it. Um, whether that's your focus, whether that's how you're implementing your technique or you're trying to implement your technique as effectively as possible. Um, there's just, there's so many pieces to that puzzle. Yeah. Uh, something that Chase and I talked about on, uh, the last podcast was how effectiveness is really attributes times skill level. Ooh. That's a so, good equation. So when we when we have superior strength, you know, they're multiplied, right? So if we have strength that's off the charts, it's going to have an outsized benefit just because they're being multiplied together, right? Now, uh, a lot of, I believe that a lot of the reason why people are very resistant to doing strength training is because they feel like it's going to take away from their ability to learn jujitsu. And I think that is complete crap. I think that being strong makes it really easier to train jujitsu in many ways. And uh, there's this concept that I've, I've run across that I really like, and it's called having a strength reserve. And it basically, when I say that, I mean, you don't have to use everything that you've got to do a technique and have it work. So you get to be in the more controlled range of how much strength you're using. Um, you get to do the same technique with similar levels of output many more times than somebody who's using 80 to 100 percent of their strength to execute a technique, right? So it's <laughs> just strength training just it like echoes across all of your jujitsu and it makes you more effective as an athlete, right? So um, let's let's so let's talk about a little bit um, some of the other benefits. So, how much truth is there to technique conquering strength? I mean, so I'm a heavyweight. Just about every opponent I've ever had is always bigger than me. I'm, the weight limit for college, 285, I was 240. The weight limit for MMA, 265, I'm 240. In jiu-jitsu, I've got I'm out there against 300-pound guys. And I've... I really think for the most part, it's just if you know how to deal with it. I mean, if you look at the number one no-gi grappler in the world, Gordon Ryan. Gordon Ryan has almost never walked out on the mat with somebody that he is bigger than. He is constantly taking on people that are, he is, that are bigger than him. And he is constantly just absolutely dogging them. Yeah, and it's it's a big deal. Like I can remember just a few times that I've seen him with a smaller opponent, and every time like Reddit blows up like, oh, he's just a smaller guy. Like, <laughs> but, but that's because it's rare. It's rare yeah. for Gordon. He's Gordon Ryan is just so good that he's like, I need additional challenge. Yeah. I need I need the optics to look good. It needs to like kind of upgrade my brand. And then these like big, really strong guys. That's part of how he does it, right? Yeah. And he's using he's using technique in a really amazing way to completely nullify, like he's he's 
he's athletic, isometrically athletic. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and like whenever he's like, oh, I'm not really an athlete. No, I know you're just good at a different part of athletics yeah. than some of these other <laughs> For people. For sure. Right? Like there's no there's yeah. no way you're doing what you're doing without being kind of like a genetic freak in some yeah. part of that athletic. Yeah. Being an athlete's a pretty broad statement. People just look at it like if you can run, if you can jump, you know, if you're very court, like obviously those are all parts of being an athlete, but there's tons of other parts of being an athlete. Like you said, being isometrically strong, that's pretty advantageous, especially for a combat sport. Yeah, for sure. And uh, like another thing that we, we hear is that, you know, 10 pounds of weight equals a belt level, right? So... Do we think that there's a strength equivalent? Can we put a metric on strength as a component of like the belt level system? I mean, my honest opinion, no. The I just think about Scott Bell, and he's the he's a high level black belt at our gym. Uh, I know Scott is obviously he's not weak, but he's nowhere close to the strongest guy that I grab in the gym. But Scott just always is adjusting his position and is always just being effective. And man, he I know, he he is able to amplify his strength considerably just with technique. But it's I I I really wouldn't say just any. And again, I think that's one of the the cool things about combat sports is you can kind of just use what you got. Like you take someone like uh, Marcelo Garcia not a physical like or at least in terms of what typical people would think a physical specimen is not a physical specimen but man like just somebody could go out there and just dog guys um so i and i can understand why somebody would say that but i i think overall i would kind of disagree you you would disagree that you can put a, a value to strength uh that is equivalent to belt level because like the 10 I, I i really believe that the the weight advantage to belt level ratio it feels real to me and like it can be overcome with technique yeah. right like for for sure like a smaller black belt most of the time he's going to tool me right because i'm like a mid-level blue belt here yeah and and like they, but he's overcoming the fact that i'm stronger by being more intelligent with his attributes. So he's he's on the technique side of the multiplication. So 10 pounds of weight is an attribute. What do we think? Uh, an extra f- 45 pounds of bench press equals a, uh, equals a belt level? A uh, uh, hundred pounds on a squat? I guess when you put it like that, yeah, it does, it does sound, it sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where, where do you think, where do you, in grappling, where do you think that the, um, the strength advantage, like what part of your body, if you just like, if you're trying to get better at grappling, like where do you get outsized benefits? Do you think it's from your hips and legs? Do you think it's from your squeezing? Like, whoa, what do you think? The the ones that pop out in my mind, of course, uh, hips, grip, and core. Those, those uh, at least, because I grab strong guys all the time. Like, like you've seen it, big, like, uh, guys from Luray come to our gym all the time, just, yep. just, to, like, just to try it and it's, and they're cool, but it's like, I've never had a problem with it, but I always notice when someone has a particularly strong grip, uh, particularly good hips or particularly strong core. And me and you were talking about this, uh, beforehand about just, uh, when somebody has the ability to pull their knees to their chest. Oh, yeah. It makes it just like even if they don't know a lot, it makes it really hard to deal with. I I remember two or three guys. Um, I remember one guy in particular. He was a he was a collegiate athlete, baseball player. He didn't know anything, but man, oh, I remember this. Guy. Yeah, <laughs> he was just able to pull his knees to, like no matter what, no matter what position. I was like, th- I was like, this should not be this hard. <laughs> Yeah, he he just he walked in and within a few weeks he we were like we're working pretty hard to get his yeah. knees away from his chest, right? I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Man, you, like have you have you seen any of his Instagram videos where he's just like doing like vertical tests with like 135 pounds on his back? No, but I want to see him. <laughs> oh my god, this guy. This guy is crazy. But yeah, like that kind of hip strength, 
that's probably top one, like one out of 10,000 people can even do that. Uh, yeah. But like his, his ability to bring in his knees and like pivot with, with power, phew, it was so impactful. It was. It was so impactful. And his core was good too, but he, I mean, he was just phenomenally athletic. Yeah. And uh, like he walked in and one or two weeks i was like god i'm working so hard to <laughs> i'm working so hard to stay ahead this is this is a two-week white belt he's never done any combat sport before he is just a freakishly strong athletic guy and he kept thinking he was doing bad i was <laughs> like bro you're not doing bad like i shouldn't have to work this hard to beat you <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh yeah so there's there's definitely like a, str- a strength component that really, I think that, I think that the biggest, biggest telling factor for me, as far as a measurable, common kind of strength training, would be what does somebody's deadlift look like? Yeah, that's definitely a a good overall strength uh, estimate. Yeah, and then the other one is probably. How many pull-ups can they do? Yeah. And like both of those things involve the core. They're not direct core, but they involve the core. You get some isometric strength from both of those things. Um, You get grip from both of those things, you know, and you get hip extension. And if they're doing it explosively, that that's like, it's a pretty direct carryover, like the hip hinge movements, right? Yeah. So, uh. I'm of the opinion that every 45 pound plate on each side is a belt level. That's just that's me doing my wild ass guess, but it feel it feels real to me from uh, my wild guess. We're gonna have to break out the chalkboard at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a chalkboard. Yeah. I guess I'll have to get one. <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, strength strength being on the attribute side, super fucking helpful. Yeah, super absolutely. Helpful. Um, so I already talked about the strength reserve, and it, it just results in more quality reps. Um, the e- execution of the technique and times physical attributes, God, it's just, it's so impactful. And uh, another thing I want to talk about is, like, how to, how to balance it. Because most of the time, people who are doing jiu-jitsu are just, they have a few hours a week to devote to themselves, mm-hmm. at least for physical development. So a strategy that makes sense for gym owners is to be like, you don't need to worry about any of that. Just come train. It's good for their retention. Like they're going to keep their students if they're in, if they're the habit. Yeah. Right. Um, But I don't think that that's actually like the best way to holistically develop because, you know, attributes times technique, like if you completely ignore your attributes, especially strength, which I think has the most outsized benefit of all of the things that you can develop as an attribute, like it's, it's, you're not going to get the same, the best results possible because there's beginner, beginner gains in technique. There's beginner gains in attributes. I would like to see people at least hit their beginner gains in their attributes. Yeah. And I do under like, and I completely understand and believe like, uh, all like, like you're, you're, Strength and condition, it has to be supplemental to your training, but like supplemental doesn't mean you don't do it. Like supplement, like supplemental could mean anything. Supplemental could mean, you know, after practice, going over, swinging a kettlebell, hitting some pull ups, you know, doing some core work. But like, definitely, I do know that because I think there's also uh, somewhat uh, maybe a stigmatism in jujitsu of like, you, we, you know, we both see the guys who kind of, refuse to do any kind of uh strength work or core work and man those are the guys your their knees are always crunching yeah. like their backs always hurting and it's like it's one of those things where it's like you can't just totally ignore something and especially when there's so many benefits to like not just jujitsu but like quality of life oh yeah there's so much quality of life to having a strong body mm-hmm. like that's it it really baffles my mind when I have to argue with people like, no, no, you you want a little muscle mass. So, oh, I'm gonna get bulky. No, you aren't. 
because there's a whole science around yeah. getting bulky like those guys. And Only you're if you want to get bulky. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, they try to get bulky. They're not going to be able to do it because they don't have the genetics or the willpower and time to do something like that. It's yeah. really hard to do those things. It it's is. hard to take it beyond. Like you're not going to look like Mr. Olympia because you decided to lift five times a week. Yeah. You're, you're gonna, you're, there's a lot more that goes <laughs> into it than that. So like there's, there's kind of levels for, and break points for how I feel like strength training can interact with your jujitsu training on like a, you know, a, a week long program kind of basis. Like what am I doing in a week? Right. Um, so the first break point is building up enough muscles and tendon health to not have injuries be as frequent. And I think that that doesn't require that much. No. They're like, do you, do you, what do you think would be the minimum required amount of strength training to like make the knees a little bit, a little bit more resilient, you know, like have, like have enough core that your lower back isn't bothering you. Two to three days a week. Um, I think it would depend on what your history was, if you had done it before, or, or if you'd done it before consistently. Um, I think you could get away with two days a week. Now, I do think, uh, especially all the research I saw through college, all the strength coaches that I had through college, for the most part, I think if you were, for athletes, if you were looking to, for, for gains, I think. Uh, especially with everything they're doing on the side or not the side, like all the practices they're going to, I would say pr I would err on three days a week. But uh, yeah, if you, I, I would say if you were just looking to maintain and for like simply for like uh, for our health. ligament health, yeah. armoring up stuff, I think you could get away with two, yeah. but I mean, shoot. I don't see how three could be a problem, especially it, like you could just make one of the days extra light, yeah. extra maintenance work. Yeah, that's honestly, it, it, you said three and I was like, I do three right yeah, now. Right go. now, right now I'm doing a, I'm doing a, a heavy upper mm -hmm. and a heavy-ish lower, um, but I'm like focusing on building range of motion in the bottom, mm -hmm. but it's heavy-ish. And then I have a lighter upper that's a little bit more, you know, recovery. Yeah. So like, I think that that's a pretty. I mean, obviously, I'm biased because I'm I'm like, oh, this is what I'm doing. But <laughs> but like, two two I think does the the maintenance. Like, regardless of where you're at, if you're at the very beginning, two will build you. Yeah. Like if you don't have a history of lifting, and you're doing two days a week, don't listen to people who are like, you have to do four or five. You don't have to. It's just. That's every, gonna hurt. <laughs> every, everybody, God, everybody talks about things like you have to do it the ideal way. Well, I think you get eighty percent of it doing it not ideal. Something beats nothing by a lot. By a lot. Yeah, Go, going to going from zero to seventy percent. That's probably one total body workout. Yeah, or maybe sixty percent, and then going from zero to eighty percent benefit is two workouts. Maybe upper lower, maybe two total body. I think the conventional wisdom is two total body. Um, and then you start really building at three plus. Yeah, I would agree. Um, but going from zero to 80 is, you, you see incredible differences from just a few months from guys that show up on the mats. They're pretty untrained. They do a little bit of strength training and you're like, oh, hey, well, you could do that now. Yeah. You weren't able to do that before. No. <laughs> like, like, did you just stiff arm me? You've never been able to do, you've never been able to lock that out on me before. Right. So there's a lot of benefits there. And I think that honestly, the, the thing that I find most important and impactful is creating this net for injury prevention. And um, if you're already injured, I think that pretty much strengthening is how you rehab them you're just strengthening key areas with the help of a, of a physical therapist absolutely so like god that's everything about injuries in jujitsu is helped by doing some basics for strength training
Right. So uh, another, another like, kind of like a side note is that when you have strength, you kind of have an oh shit button you can press that you didn't have before. For sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I love having an oh shit button. I'm like, oh, that guy's about to do this. And then just like explosively move them. Like, okay, yeah, I don't want that to happen. Like, especially like, um, we had like a bunch of pretty strong uh, new-ish people show up in the past few weeks. And there were a few times where they like grab a hold of my knee and I'm like, I need to get out of here now. This guy's a stranger. Yeah. I don't have any idea what they're about to do. And like I post in the armpit and I just like explosively put myself out there. And if, if I hadn't been strength training pretty consistently for the past six months, that might have been me yelling tap. Yeah. And, and maybe they respect it. Maybe they don't. Or maybe they know what's going on. Maybe they don't. But I get to be out of that that situation. Yeah. So I was just hitting that oh shit button, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we kind of talked about the basics of programming strength in jiu-jitsu. Like, I want to make it very simple for people to decide what they should do. And I kind of like the idea of turning it into a ratio like if your major goal is to just do jujitsu that's your primary hobby that's going to be your primary physical activity that's good i'm i'm good with that that's what it is for me too but i think that you can't ignore strength because of all the benefits it gives you and i like a three to one ratio for most people. Three, three hours of jujitsu, one hour of some kind of outside strength training. I like the sound of that. Yeah. So like, because if you're putting all of the extra, da- if like say you're, say you're, you've gone nuts. You just, you love jujitsu. You're, you're training at 6 a.m. You're training again in the evening. I've seen people do this. And, and, uh, You've done this. (laughs) I've done this, yes. Um, And, like, the damage just starts to accumulate if you aren't giving back to your body. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you're not giving back to your body if you're beating it up to to build strength. (laughs) But but I swear to you, you're giving back. You are. Because the, the way that you're building, it supports your ability to do these movements with the strength reserve I talked about. And having a little bit left in the tank for explosiveness and power just it makes it easier for you to stay training at high quality for longer absolutely so um we talked about minimum effective dose one day a week much better than zero two days a week probably the right idea for most people Mm -hmm. as a minimum three you're going to make progress um so let's go into some of the very most impactful strength movements that we can do that cuz we're going for simple, right? 3 to 1 ratio of out of jiu-jitsu to outside strength exercise. Yeah. So let's go over like what we really find is the best types of exercises to do in the very most simple way. Like, let's go with, um, how about we have 30 minute, um, room for a 30 minute strength session. You get everything done in that time. You think you could do it in 30 minutes? Yeah, well, and, and again, I'm a little, like, because I'm a fighter, it's a little different. Like, uh, my strength training is designed for me not to, to gain mass. Okay. So I uh, so I do imams. So I, I literally do. Can you define what an imam? So is? an imam is every minute on the minute. So uh, essentially, it, it, I can even just give you a quick break. Like uh, one of my imams is uh, hex bar deadlift, and I'll do uh, six repetitions. And every every it's ten rounds. Every round's one minute. So I've got one minute to do six. And it's not like I like space out the I bang out the six reps and then I rest for the remainder of the minute so usually that means I'm resting for about 30 to 40 seconds 
And then the the next exercise in that would be uh, like a uh, uh, I'm laying on my back doing a uh, a f- uh, k- kettlebell floor press with a with a glute bridge. Uh, so I'm, I'm my body's super activated. I bang out six reps each side. I'm getting another 30 to 40 seconds of rest, and I, and I just repeat that for 10 rounds. So I'm done with upper body push or uh, lower body pull, upper body push inside of 10 minutes. Then after that, uh, my next round is something like uh, kettlebell swings, uh, explosive kettlebell swings uh, for one round. And then the next round, uh, I'm on the the ski erg for 10 to 15 to 20 seconds. Uh, And I just repeat that back and forth. That's uh, I'm done with uh, like uh, an explosive, upper body pull and a lower body push in 10 minutes and then they fit uh jeff always has me finish out with some kind of uh block round grit like farmer walks ball squeezes stuff like that now um obviously i'm a uh i'm an ma athlete uh, jiu-jitsu, i still think 30 minutes is a pretty good one i do think optimally i think 45 i think 45 is by far uh, the best, and maybe you even add fifteen minutes to warm up. You're at a full hour. Yeah. Yeah. That, so, do you think that the way that you described your short rest lifting, like that, is something that would cover all of the bases for somebody who's more of a hobbyist? Like, um, I've toyed with the idea of doing things like this. It's almost like combining um conditioning with strength building very interesting uh and and i've talked to jeff about this jeff thinks you should never combine uh conditioning and strength training because you're always going to be taking away from one of one or the other he think he thinks they is that like that like like all of that like don't get me wrong my my heart rate gets up during doing that but that really is not conditioning uh, or, 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 or like it not, would be conditioning for me for for sure yeah, yeah and, and and i've built up to doing it right uh and and usually the way he programs it i uh, i do like three or four weeks of gpp general prepared uh uh fitness yeah. before uh general physical preparedness sorry yeah before i even do that so i'm i'm like primed up to do that um so this sounds like you're talking about like fight camp fitness yes right precisely um, but yeah, I definitely, I like, I think it, like an imam could be, uh, a good solution for someone who's only got 30 minutes. I think for sure you, I, I, you, you maybe just have to switch it up a little bit, maybe, maybe lower the intensity a little bit, but, uh, that's for sure a potential solution. I, but I even think just, uh, a, a basic strength training could, uh, as long as you're doing things properly, uh, I think, I think you could get a pretty decent strength workout inside of 30 minutes in like in college when we were in, um, in season, uh, and we had a great strength coach, uh, coach Stork. Mm-hmm. He, he would, uh, he would get us in and out in 30 minutes. Obviously he would, he would prime us. He would have us be, uh, good and warmed up, go through some mobility drills first and then in and out in 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, that's, it's very interesting because traditional fitness on youtube and everywhere else that you talk to just like nor- normal folks they're they're like you need to you need to be waiting two or three minutes of rest you need to make sure everything is pretty much 100 percent recovered and i kind of think that that's bullshit um i i like because for most people because how hyper optimized do you really have to be um in building your strength like it it just I it's it's one of those things where like again we would have to break out the chalkboard really to dance <laughs> like depending on what you're doing like like waiting two to three minutes is everything at, at least from what I've seen but it, that not ever that's not what everyone's doing and 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 that might not be what your goal is for for a combat sport mm-hmm. um see it's it's one of the it's it sounds like a, a cop out but it really it really just depends. Yeah. Do you think that it depends on just your goal setting in general? Yeah, for sure. So let, let's so let's say that we're just trying to get, you know, 80% of the benefit out of our outside conditioning. Um, 
Something that I learned from my strength coach in high school, which isn't the same as your app state strength coach, uh, strength coach or whatever, but like I learned that 90 seconds gets you 90% of the way there. I think he just said 90 twice to, to sound smart, but, but like, it does sound smart. It does sound smart. <laughs> uh, he, well, well done. Coach. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, that's, that's pretty short rest for, for things like squats. Things, oh yeah. Th- things like deadlifts. Um, I remember when I was doing doubles of, of squats at three plus plates, just being like fucking completely whoo. And then, but I would give myself 90 seconds cause I didn't have that much time. Yeah. So like, I was like, okay, I got to get this done in 30 minutes. How much time do I have left? Son of a bitch. I have 60 to 90 seconds per, per set here. Like, let me take off just a little bit of weight. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, I actually think that it, I think that for most people, like shortening the amount of time that you spend strength training and reducing the number of exercises that you actually do um, is the right answer um, because I think it increases compliance. And yeah. like people will, people will do it all of the time if they're not doing three variations of deadlift. They're just doing one. Yeah. Um, they're optimizing their body to understand how to do that because they're not going to become a strength athlete necessarily. It's, if they're taking strength and they're just like, how can I supplement jujitsu so I can stay healthy and become strong enough to not get ragdolled? Which I think that's. Pretty, yeah. I don't want to get ragdolled in the training room. I want to keep going to the training room and not get hurt. Yeah. And I like the idea of doing just like two or three compounds and doing it kind of like I like 70% one rep max. Yeah. You know. I think people get way too involved with how much weight they're doing. Like are as far as like if they're not doing crazy heavy they they think they're wasting their time no, like they're not though it's exactly like like i mean and my my coach said it all the time uh force is uh mass times acceleration like mm-hmm. doing a lift uh explosively and properly like with not as much weight can it be, be- benefit uh, like just as beneficial now again i'm not saying don't lift heavy like there's tons of benefits to lifting heavy Mm-hmm. Also, just lifting heavy is fun. Yeah. It really is fun. You, just you feel cool seeing what you can do, yeah. building confidence. But it's, I really think people get get a little lost in it. Like, really, just just moving moving weight fast is great. Moving weight with good technique is just good for you. Yeah, and like, like there's there's a lot of slant here because we're we're combat athletes and we're thinking that we need the the explosiveness we need the short like you're talking about imam and that sounds fascinating to me yeah but for you know the soccer mom soccer dad type yeah i i just i think that just doing it at a very comfortable weight um having full control especially at the beginning when you're learning um and doing it kind of slow is probably the first answer yeah and then sure. and then you when that feels locked in and you feel in full control, then you start exploding just a little bit because that'll carry over. But I think that if we're looking for tendon health, um, injury resilience, and some of the static strength gains, that we would actually do better to do higher repetitions um, than a traditional strength thing. We're not... not not uh less than eight and being like this is for beginners um and just having full control moving it really slow and you're gonna feel silly going really slow bench pressing 25 pound dumbbells yeah just kind of get over it yeah get over it (laughs) that because you you need to give your body a chance to develop the 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 tendons and and the small muscles and all of the stabilization and all of that stabilization i i actually switched from barbells to dumbbells so that i can get more stabilization in yeah. a deeper more stretch. bang for your buck you get way more bang for you don't tire out your central nervous system 
Um, you get like the full stretch, like where where I get submitted in an Americana has changed since I switched from barbells to dumbbells. Mm -hmm. So like range of motion, everything. So take it slow, uh, keep it simple. You know, uh, if you have time constraints, uh, you can up the tempo in terms of not in terms of necessarily speeding up the reps themselves but decreasing the rest just a little bit and just hitting the same two or three movements if you're not trying to build like a bodybuilder physique two or three compounds is gonna yeah. do enough for you yeah for sure yeah so uh and then we we talked earlier about the 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 core the core work and the hips do hanging leg raises yeah i promise <laughs> they're, they're so impactful it's it's uh, it, it really mimics uh guard retention yeah pulling your knees to your chest is a superpower and that's like that's about as close as we can get to a direct a yeah. direct uh exercise for it you when you when you progress you could even like put a dumbbell between your yeah feet. you're probably not gonna want to but yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to but yeah. i've done it a couple of yeah. times <laughs> but yeah so like uh don't don't there's a bunch of benefits to building strength there's not there's not a really an excuse not to do some some sort of strength training something 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 going from zero to one is huge going from one to two is also big you could stop there if you want to you're you're reaping so many benefits by just getting up to yeah. those two yeah. you're probably not going to want to stop like like really when you see the rewards you get from going from zero to one it like it gives you that itch of like what if I go to two and then you, what, if I, I what if I go to three? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, don't ignore the strength component. You can train in lower amounts of time. Mm -hmm. You can train with just a few compound exercises and you can get so many gains. So, uh, don't buy into the hype of just, just focusing only on jujitsu because jujitsu training makes you better at jujitsu. No, having a healthy, strong body and jujitsu makes you the best you can be at jiu-jitsu yeah so um all right cool so uh thanks for coming here and nerding out with me on the podcast and uh leave comments below if you have questions and we will see you in the next video